Uh, say your name and spell it for us so our graphic people can put a little okay. title underneath you and put your name there. My name is John E. Worthen. John E. Initial E. Worthen, W O R T H E N. Okay. Would you like Doctor or do you just would rather go by John? Are you going to use graphics? Yes. Don't you we'll think put, it needs to be the doctor if we're doing this for uh, our president? We can put John. Yeah, I think and I think that president, uh, Ball State University. Yeah, yeah. Would you like doctor? I don't know. I think it's up to Jeff. Uh, I said go with Johnny Worthen, president. Okay. Okay. Right. And we'll we'll just go president, Ball State University. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Right. All right. Uh, first off, let's talk about what the mission is of Ball State University and uh, what is unique about the university. The mission of Ball State University is very similar to other public universities in this country. Uh, we perform teaching, research, and service. There's a special um, unique thing about Ball State University, and that is that we have uh, grown up as a teaching institution. We began as a normal school to train teachers, and so we have a very long tradition of teaching. Uh, we are an institution of 18,000 students, and that also gives us uh, some unique characteristics. And uh, we are uh, committed to becoming an outstanding teaching university, meaning that we are going to offer the very best teaching and uh, have the very best teaching learning situation that we can, that we can offer for our students. Um, and that means that uh, our faculty are uh, responsible for doing scholarly work as well as teaching. Uh, but we are not aspiring to become one of the great research universities in this country. We need good research universities, and we have many of them in this region and in the nation, but that's not really our role. Our role is an inst as an institution is to teach a very diverse student body, diverse in the sense that we have students who are very bright students. We have 1,200 students in the Honors College, and these students could handle any academic program in the country. We have a lot of average students, and we have some students who would be in community colleges in other states because Indiana does not have a community college system. So we have a broad range of students in terms of their ability and in terms of, of background. So our mission is really to do the very best job we can with the students who come to us and who are interested in uh, an undergraduate or a graduate degree. And so uh, over the next several years, we are going to commit ourselves to strengthening the teaching learning process, to enhancing the educational experience that our students have when they come to Ball State University. What are some ways that the campaign is going to affect this mission, is going to affect that strengthening of that teaching? The campaign is very important in uh, helping us meet our goals to become a premier teaching institution because it will give us finances, it will give us resources which will help us attract very good faculty and retain the excellent faculty we already have. It will help us uh, attract some very good students and good students and good faculty make a great university. We need to be able to attract uh, some outstanding students because when you have a, uh, an excellent student in a class that tends to raise the level of, of the standard in that class. And so it really, good students affect all students at the university. So it's in the interest of the entire student body that we have more first-rate students at our institution. And so the scholarships that we will be able to support in this campaign will help us uh, attract those students. And then we have a number of facilities which uh, cannot be funded by state funds, which we need to build in order to offer the, uh, the kind of uh, a full, uh, comprehensive program to our students. And so we will, we need those uh, resources from the private sector to help us attract faculty, attract students, build buildings. It will also help us because uh, a successful campaign uh, has a psychological effect on the university. It demonstrates to our uh, alumni and to our uh, state officials that we are an institution that uh, 
can set goals and accomplish those goals, and we can uh, demonstrate that we are an institution worthy of support, both state support and uh, private support. I think, in fact, uh, a successful campaign will actually help us attract more state support. The, 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 the General Assembly in this state and other states are interested in institutions um, helping to finance the uh, instructional and research program with some private support. Why is there so much emphasis in the campaign on things like endowed professorships, endowed chairs, uh, faculty leaves? Endowed chairs and distinguished professorships are a major uh, thrust in the campaign because those uh, chairs and distinguished professorships will help us attract the very best faculty. And we, it, we recruit on a national basis. So it's important for us to be able to, to show to outstanding faculty that we have some special uh, opportunities for them here to teach and to do research at Ball State. And it will also help us retain some of those outstanding faculty who we have appointed as assistant professors and who have grown in their research and teaching capacity and who might be attracted away by other institutions. So it will give us the kind of strong faculty uh, that we need in order to, uh, to uh, do a good job in our teaching and research programs. I will, uh, I think we're picking up movement of the chair. Oh, you actually hear the chair itself? Yeah. Okay. I guess we'll try to reduce. Okay. We'll try, to, we'll try not to move in the chair too much. Okay. Framing okay, guys? Rick? Yeah. Okay. Um, how does scholarship programs and fellowships that uh, the school would like to offer uh, increase that, uh, what do I want to say, the, uh, that increasing of the student body, the, the level of learning? Make uh, offering a, a better program, I guess, will uh, in, have an influx of better students. So maybe you want to speak about scholarships and fellowships. We have in the uh, case statement for the campaign uh, funds that will be allocated for student scholarships and fellowships and graduate assistantships. It's very important that we be able to uh, attract the very best students, students who are interested in, in scholarly work, students who are interested in really uh, undertaking serious study. Because when those students are among other students in the student body, they tend to raise the, the level of, uh, uh, of intellectual uh, activity. It tends to improve the intellectual climate on the campus. With respect to, um, let me just say a word about um, undergraduate fellowships, because that's a, a unique program that we hope to expand. Um, it will permit us to offer students the opportunity to do research with faculty. Uh, undergraduate research with senior faculty is not um, possible in most institutions. Even in the great research universities in this country, most of the students who are doing research with faculty are graduate students and in fact doctoral students. We propose to have a great many undergraduates have the opportunity to do research directly with senior faculty, either by uh, with fellowships that will permit them to, to uh, do that during the academic year or in the summer time. And uh, the stipends that these students will receive from these fellowships will encourage our very best students to work closely with faculty. Access to faculty is one of the uh, things that we are trying to encourage, uh, trying to, uh, to uh, uh, emphasize at Ball State. We would like to be an institution of 18,000 students which feels like a small liberal arts college, but offers 125 academic programs of study and 100 uh, uh, programs of study that a graduate student may enroll in. So uh, we, will, we will combine really the best of the very large state universities and the best of the smaller liberal arts colleges and be able to do that in, a, uh, in an academic climate that's very friendly and uh, where, where students do not get lost in the shuffle. And at the same time, um, the tuition is a reason, at a reasonable level. 
terrific. Uh, touch upon uh, how scholarships and fellowships for undergraduates and I guess assistantships for graduates help increase that, um, bring in a new, a new student into a, um, to a better quality school. Yeah, let's also, um, let's also go back and talk about the goals. Okay. Um, we, the mission is really not the right term. And uh, that, I think, gets us off in a little bit, get, got me off in a little different tangent. I think we ought to... Yeah, and, about the goals of the university. Yeah, the yeah, mission, yeah, right? mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's wait for yeah. the... Uh, okay. Why, do, why doesn't our director of public information services cut the bell down to a... Um, to a uh, uh, tone that we can all live with. Yeah, Some authority to do that. Sure, well, anyone has the authority. Just take <laughs> take it, grab grab hold of it. <laughs> take it off the wall. I'll see what I can do. I'll talk about it. Okay, any any time, John. If you want to uh, start with the goals. Yeah, yeah. The, the question really is, um, uh, what's the uh, what's the primary goal? of uh, Ball State University. Where is Ball State University heading? Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's a good question. Why don't you ask that? Yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. A, a number of people have asked in the last few years, where is Ball State heading? What kind of university would Ball State like to be 10 years down the road? Uh, how would we like to be recognized? And the answer is that we would like to be an institution that is recognized as the premier teaching institution in the nation. Now that's a very high aspiration, but it's one that we think is realistic. We have a tradition of being an excellent teaching institution. We grew up as an institution that trained teachers. So we have a lot of faculty who are very interested in students and very interested in their learning. At the same time, we require all of our faculty to do scholarly work. You can't get promoted or you can't achieve tenure unless you do research. Our goal is to have our faculty be teacher scholars. And that's an important difference because a lot of universities that are large public universities, state supported universities, are encouraging their faculty to do research and to teach, but the rewards for doing good research is to come out of the classroom. At Ball State, our best faculty are still in the classroom. Our faculty continue to teach and do research. And our goal is to enhance the educational experience of students. And we're looking for ways. And in the past uh, three years, we have, we have made uh, at least a dozen major changes on this campus designed to improve the quality of education of our undergraduate and graduate students. So the answer to the question, where are we heading? We're heading uh, to a position where we can say that we offer the best instructional program that is possible for students in a, in a very friendly climate on campus, and, uh, and we do it at a reasonable cost. Terrific. That's great. That's great. How do, this, this one, how do scholarships and fellowships add to that? One of the uh, important parts of the capital campaign is to um, have some funds devoted to scholarships and fellowships and graduate assistantships. The reason that is so key is it is. Sure. We have a loud buzzer. Okay. Okay. Is it that objection? One, one of the instruments. Uh, How about if we close those drapes? Would that dampen no, out? I think they're using that. For oh, you're using that for light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One of the key parts of the capital campaign is the funds that will be devoted to attracting good students. Uh, we plan to put some of the capital campaign dollars into scholarships and undergraduate fellowships and graduate assistantships. The reason that it is so important to attract good students is because when you attract a very well prepared, motivated, bright student. It affects, that student affects uh, his or her peers and raises the level of, uh, of intellectualism on the campus. 
it improves the, the entire climate on the campus. A professor is able to set higher standards in a class where he has some excellent students. So good students really improve the entire student body. We have uh, been uh, uh, really offering inadequate graduate assistantships. And so we have not been getting the very best graduate students that we need to attract in order to have high quality graduate programs. And so we're going to put some of our funds into graduate assistantships. But, but attracting good students is, is one of the key ways that an institution gets better. Uh, a, a great institution has a great faculty and a great student body. And so we're going to put special emphasis on attracting students and attracting faculty in this capital campaign. Um, let's talk about the impact or role of technology equipment that's uh, adding to this level of teaching. We are very committed at Ball State to use the new technology to improve research and teaching, but particularly teaching. We have, we're in the fifth year of a computer competency program, which was funded by the state, and we have uh, generated um, enough funds to have adequate computer equipment on the campus. And we have set a goal that by next year, every graduate who goes through commencement will be computer competent. That means that those students will be able to use the computer to solve real problems in their major field of study, not just do word processing or play games on the, on the computer, but really know how to use the computer. We're on track, we're gonna meet that goal. The other uh, technology that is very important to us is telecommunications technology. Just uh, uh, a few days ago, we opened the Ball Building, which is an information and communication sciences building. It will give us state-of-the-art equipment and facilities to help us with our telecommunications thrust on the campus. Our, our goal is to use telecommunications technology to improve teaching. One of the ways that we're going to do this is through our distance learning program. We now, for example, teach the full MBA by interactive television. We teach the courses live on campus and simultaneously send them out to over 40 sites around the state of Indiana. Now, we're very fortunate because Indiana is the leader in the nation in uh, having an optic fiber communication system, which we can use really at no cost to the institution. So we send out these courses and the students who are taking those courses at other sites are able to interact with the professor and the class on campus. They're able to ask questions and answer questions and really be participants. That has been a very successful program. We are now doing courses uh, in the general education area, that is the courses that students usually take in their first two years of college. And we will be teaching some high school courses from our new Academy for Science, Mathematics and Humanities, which was approved last year by the General Assembly. So uh, one thrust in the use of telecommunications technology is interactive television teaching to extend the courses that are taught live here on the Ball State campus to other citizens and high schools and community uh, uh, technical colleges and uh, business sites around the state. A second way though that we are using telecommunications technology is to encourage and make it possible for faculty to use more visual materials in the classroom. And we are doing that, um, we have made that convenient by a new um, uh, installation in partnership with AT&T, which we call TIMCOF. It's an acronym for the teaching environment model of the campus of the future. And it will permit us to transmit voice, data, and video, particularly video, uh, and that's what makes this program, this, this communication system unique. It will permit us to transmit voice data and video throughout the campus and among academic buildings so that a professor will be able to call up uh, a visual materials, a slide, uh, a one minute of videotape, uh, a, uh, a visual uh, image from a video disc uh, and have that appear in the classroom in a very convenient manner. And we think faculty are going to really begin to use visual materials and that will enhance learning because it simply gives the student another 
way of seeing and hearing uh, and, and learning what the professor is trying to teach. Uh, so uh, the use of telecommunications technology is one of our major thrusts at, at Ball State University. We don't see it as the complete answer. It's just a tool, but we think it is a tool, an instrument that can really improve the teaching learning process. The, uh, the sociologist Daniel Bell had an article published just uh, within the last year saying that he thinks the next technological revolution will be the use of computer and telecommunications technology to speed communications. And we fully expect that by the year 2000, most colleges and universities will be using telecommunications technology much more than they are now. And Ball State simply is going to be the leader in the use of that technology.